When I heard that there was going to be a Grand Prix at the Nürburgring, the Eiffel Grand Prix, in October this year, I thought Formula One's calendar makers had had a funny turn. But in fact, it was actually a really good decision, which it may not seem like when you consider that the Nürburgring is famous for one thing, unpredictable weather. And the Nürburgring in October could mean bright hot sunshine, heavy rain, hailstorms, and about 20 centimetres of snow. And that's just the typical afternoon in that district at this time of year. But that unpredictable weather is something that the Nürburgring is famous for. Going back to the 50s, the 60s, and many other races held since, there's been rain at different parts of the circuit. The conditions have changed through the race. Most memorably for me was in 2007, the European Grand Prix held here at the Nürburgring, where Marcus Winkelhock made a really inspired tyre decision in his spiker to pit on the warm-up lap, switch from the slick tyres to the rain tyres, and start the race from the pit lane. He started dead last, but he'd been looking at the sky, he'd seen the storms coming, and when there was an absolutely torrential downpour, half the field had to pit. Winklehock, though, he was on the right tyres at the right time, and disappeared off in the distance. He nearly lapped the entire field, and only lost the lead of the race because the safety car came out and he wiped out his advantage. Had the safety car stayed in the pits a little bit longer and Winklehock had got the lap on the field, he might well have won that Grand Prix, his only race in Formula One. However, the car did have a technical problem later in the race, so it probably would have retired anyway. A question I'm asked quite often is, why do Formula One cars have slick tyres? And you'd be surprised how often I get asked that question. For a lot of people, it seems obvious. You have a, a no grooves on the tyre, a large contact patch, more grip in the dry. But the grooves on a tyre, and the road tyre is exactly the same, are to disperse water. If there's no water on the track, you don't need any grooves. So it's, it follows that a Formula One wet tyre has these big grooves on the tyre and that disperses water. Quite a lot of it, in fact. A Formula One wet tyre at 300 kph, a rear tyre like this, will kick out 85 litres of water per second. That's an awful lot of water being dispersed by these channels. But that's not the full story. Pirelli have told me that the grooves in the tyre, these little treads in the tyre, are not designed just to disperse the water, but there's also a real key consideration about the temperature and the operating temperature of the tyre. The operating temperature of a wet tyre is much lower than a slick or even the intermediate, but it's still crucial. And the blocks of the tread, these individual squares and rectangles, are all precisely designed that when the tyre is under load at the base of the tyre, that they move around in a particular way. The grooves between them are shaped and designed in such a way to facilitate that movement so they can generate the heat to make the tyre work on what is normally a very cold track, exactly like we saw, well, didn't see, in free practice at the Nürburgring. And that is why the tyres are a little bit more complex than the grooves just dispersing water. Pirelli spent an awful lot of time developing the shapes of the tyre blocks and the tread blocks. They use various technologies like CFD, computational fluid dynamics, a few other software simulation techniques that they wouldn't fully go into to simulate how the tyre sits on the road, how much water is being dispersed, and how much they can deal with before the tyre starts to aquaplane. Till it starts to lift up, the tyres can't disperse any more water and the car goes skating off the track. That is one of the really trick bits of these tyres. But Pirelli have another factor. Computer, computer simulation doesn't do everything. They have to do real world testing as well. And to do that, they typically go to the Castellet circuit in France, though not exclusively, where they use artificial sprinklers to wet the track. But there's a problem even with that. The atmospheric conditions can change so much. There could be sunshine, there could be wind, the, the, there could have been a 24 hour race or a long endurance test on the circuit before Pirelli get there with the Formula One car to test. And that affects how much water the circuit itself absorbs. If the absorption rate of the circuit is different and the climatic condition, conditions are different, the actual result of the experiments Pirelli are running with their prototype wet tyres can be more different due to the climatic conditions than they are tyre to tyre, which makes developing these tyres really, really difficult. And it's super impressive. But it's deeper than that. The tyres themselves are actually a fundamental different shape to the slick tyres that you normally see the cars on. The outside di diameter of the wet tyre is 10 millimetres more than the slick tyre, which means the car sits slightly higher when fitted with the wets. 
that mean, that's not a bad thing in wet conditions when you've got standing water on the track. The cars are less at risk of aquaplaning if the car's sitting a little higher. However, it is still a bit of a challenge. But these tyres are worth watching because the way they wear, the way they run during a race, is quite different to the other tyres that we see in Formula One. The wet tyre, when it starts to wear down, starts to become less and less effective. It's a bit like having a winter tyre on your road car. The more you wear it, the less traction you have in those poor conditions. Exactly the same for the wet tyre. And that's why you see at certain points of a race where the track is drying, but it's still full wet conditions, or the pit strategy doesn't really want you to bring in and select an intermediate or a slick tyre, you'll see drivers diving offline, hitting the puddles and doing what I call puddle hunting. And what they're actually doing is they're cooling down the surface of the tyre because if it gets too hot, these tyres are really susceptible to blistering and tyre and damage. So you, the drivers have to keep the tyre temperatures under control on these wets, even more so than they do on the, the softest of slick tyres. It's a real challenge and something we could see at the Nürburgring and possibly Imola as well. I think we're less likely to see it in Turkey or the final three races of the year in the Middle East. It's a similar situation with the intermediate tyre. As you can see, very different design of tyre, not just the colour of the sidewall. The actual shape and size of the tyre is different to the wet, but also different to the slicks. Its outside diameter is five millimetres bigger than the slick tyre. The compounds are different, the constructions are different. You can see the grooves in the tyre, and while these do serve a purpose of dispersing water, quite obviously, they are also designed in a slightly different way to the wet tyre in that there's a lot more to do with generating heat in the tyre because the intermediate can be run on an almost dry track. So you won't see so much of the puddle hunting I talked about with the intermediate as you do with the full wet. And when, a when an intermediate tyre wears down, it doesn't lose performance in the same way that a wet tyre does when it wears down. So if you see the intermediates in use at a drying circuit, like perhaps like the Eiffel Grand Prix could well see on qual in qualifying or even in the race, you start to see the tyres wearing down and the tread pattern disappearing. These intermediates can go quite a long way like that before they really start to lose performance. And at that point anyway, it's probably time to sw switch to the slick tyre and get going. However, that's a really key decision. At what point do you switch from the wet to the intermediate to the slick or the other way around? Get that decision right, you could be like Winklehock, half a lap ahead. Get it wrong, you could be like Hamilton was in that race, stuck in the gravel trap. It's really a key decision to make and that's what's going to trouble the pit wall all the way through this weekend, I think. The other key factor here at the Nürburgring that the teams are going to be really concerned with is the temperature. The ambient temperature during the, well, washed out free practice session day on Friday was 10 degrees centigrade. The minimum operating temperature for all of the Pirelli range of tyres is 15 degrees centigrade. If a tyre is exposed to an ambient temperature below that, they're at risk of what Pirelli call cold cracks. And what that means is the material in the tyre, the polymer in the tyre, starts to go a little bit brittle. And you can't really see it on the surface of the tyre if you don't touch them or manipulate them in any way. You might then go and put it into a tyre blanket or bolt it to the car and go and try and do some laps. When that happens and the tyre's gone below that 15 degrees centigrade for long enough, those little cracks start to appear and that can destroy the tyre and it can destroy its performance very, very quickly. So Pirelli has been really strict with the teams and told them whatever you do, do not expose these tyres to temperatures below 15 degrees centigrade. But the ambient air temperature at 10 degrees raises a real challenge. And that means that Pirelli have had to bring the tyres over from Italy in the trucks. The trucks have all had to be heated so the, tight, the temperature in the back of the truck never drops below that 15 degrees. Then in the tyre fitting area where the, the rubber is fitted onto the wheel rim, between that fitting area and the team garage, the teams have to come and get the tyres, rush them back into the garage and put them immediately into the tyre blankets where they're kept at above that 15 degree minimum. And that is all the way through the race weekend, including overnight. They cannot be allowed to cool below that level. And there is some concern that if a team's tyre blanket fails or a mechanic forgets to switch them on overnight, you're going to have big tyre problems and you're going to start seeing those cold cracks on the tyre. So the teams have been really strictly told to keep an eye out for it. And it's so extreme that the cars going to the Weybridge, they are going to be allowed to have the tyre blankets all the way down to the Weybridge, which they're not normally allowed to do. And at the end of each session, if there are any sessions indeed, normally the Pirelli 
staff expect to see the teams bring the tyres to them in the tyre fitting area so they can do various checks and you know, check the tyre usage, check the wear, check all the you know, normal tyre things that Pirelli mechanics do. At the Nürburgring, the mechanics are going to come to the teams so that those tyres are never going to have to be out of those blankets for too long to avoid that cold cracking scenario. It's a really unusual race, not just because it's the Nürburgring, but also because it's the Nürburgring, the weather is deeply unpredictable. And it could be over this weekend, now we've made a video entirely about wet tyres, that it doesn't rain anymore. Though the weather forecast doesn't say that's likely, it is the Nürburgring and anything can happen.